So at some point, there's going to be a natural pruning that happens with the friendships you've cultivated in your life. Welcome to the Friend Forward Podcast, Season 5. Let's talk about how to not feel like a failure after a friendship breakup. So about a couple of weeks ago, I had two sessions in one day. And as a friendship coach, I get to talk to women who share their heart with me about what they're going through in their friendships. And we come up with like actual tangible things that they can do, right? And I thought it was interesting because two women brought me the same specific issue within hours of each other. And this was that issue. They were walking me through the details of a friendship breakup that they were trying to process and they, and they didn't know how to move forward. And at some point in each of the sessions, both of their shoulders had slumped after kind of dumping on me the details of this, of this drama and saying, I just can't have another friendship breakup. In so many words, they expressed the same sentiment. I can't do this again. What does this say about me that here I am again having a fallout? And I want to share with you a bit of what I shared with them during that session to help give them a bit more optimism and perspective. Okay. So if you find yourself starting to feel like, what is this, what does this say about me and getting discouraged by the fact that one of your friendships have ended? I have a couple things for you to keep in mind. The first thing I want you to avoid doing is internalizing it. This means we start to say like, what's wrong with me? What does this reflect about my character? What will people think about me? We think that it has some reflection on who we are as a person that a friendship ended. If I can help put some things in perspective for you, the research tells us that we tend to replace half of our friends every seven years. So at some point, there's going to be a natural pruning that happens with the friendships you've cultivated in your life. Now, we're not talking about a person who's always cutting people off, ghosting people. That, that's something totally different. But if naturally you have a friendship that faded out or you didn't see eye to eye or kind of ended tensely, it's not necessarily indicative of your ability to maintain relationships. Sometimes it's a reflection of differing values, differing objectives and goals. Okay. So our assumptions can't be, oh, every friendship will last forever. And I know you know that. We all know that intellectually. But when it does end, we find ourselves trying to grapple with, what it says about us as people. So the first thing I want you to avoid doing is internalizing it. The second thing I want you to be very careful of is compensating for it. In that second session I'm referring to that I had with this particular young lady, as we began to talk about, you know, this relationship and then talk about moving forward, she said to me, you know, well, I can't have another friendship breakup. You know, I, I don't want to do this again. So, and I started to immediately get concerned. Here's why. Some of us are holding on to friendships because we fear what it would say about us if we let it fall by the wayside. We are scared of having a friendship end if we think that it will make us look bad or if it will say something about our, our abilities. And so some of us remain in friendships where we're enduring mistreatment. We remain in friendships that feel like a, a depletion of our energy. But while we might not admit it, for some of us, the motivation to maintain the relationship is a fear of what it would say about us if we let it go. And so I want you to be very careful of compensating for failed friendships by remaining in those that not only don't serve you, but maybe eventually become actively harmful for you. The third thing I want you to be very careful of when you find yourself feeling like a failure after a friendship breakup is to not give up. And I know it sounds cheesy, but to not give up on friendships. Sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, this is like the third friendship fallout I've had. Like maybe I'm not cut out for this or maybe I just, I just do it wrong or to avoid feeling the pain I feel right now, I'm just going to avoid relationships altogether. But being in a relationship with any person is no guarantee of safety and, and long-term comfort. That's not possible. So to cut yourself off from the possibility of pain in a relationship is also to remove yourself from all the good stuff that it affords you as well. So if you find yourself mentally beginning to go to that place of saying, well, I'll just bypass all of that by just like not starting up any new friendships. I'm just not going to do that anymore. I want you to be to be very careful about adopting that mindset. And finally, I want you to be very careful of comparing your friendships to others. Now, you've, you've already heard all this stuff about like, oh, people only show their highlight reel on social media. You know that to be true. But yet some of us still do it. If you find like, gosh, I've only had my friends for three years and we fell out. But those girls over there, they're always talking about how they've been friends for like 10, 15 years. What am I doing wrong? Let me explain something to you. If we compare our friendships to other people's, what we're doing is failing to account for the reasons they're choosing to stay in those friendships. 
I, I, I challenge you to think about this. And I've been really kind of meditating on this thought lately. What to you makes a successful friendship? How do you know that a friendship is successful? Is it a friendship that lasts for a long time that equals success? Because not to be a downer, but there are some people who have been in friendships that are unhealthy, but there's codependence there. Or they don't know how to make new friends, so they stick with what they know, even though they've outgrown it. So we can't measure our short-term friendships against people who have been together longer and think, well, they're somehow more successful because it's been 10 years. I, I want to go a step further because I often hear women compare their friendships to the friendships of their boyfriend or husband or a man in their life. They'll say, well, God, he's like had these friends for you know 20 years and I'm not trying to, to dismiss that. But can I share something very interesting with you? So for men, they do tend to highlight the duration of their friendship. There are also many men who would say that the person they consider their boy is somebody they also have not spoken to in six years. For women, it's not pretty frequent that you hear us talking about a woman we don't speak to, but that's my friend. Now, maybe it doesn't happen as consistently or frequently as we would like, but the research even says that the reason for women's dissolution, it starts when they stop talking. So men, and I understand I'm generalizing and you know that I'm good about putting the, the details and the links to the research in the show notes so you can explore this for yourself, right? But it's not fair to compare these two things because our cultures are different, what we prioritize in friendships are different. So to say, well, he has boys he's had for 20 years, what does it say about me? The research shows that women's friendships are deeper than men's friendships. But yes, they are more fragile. But it could be because we're bringing so much to the table. We have so many grand expectations. We do get so intimately involved. And because of that, there might be more at stake. So if you're in a friendship that ain't that deep in the first place, then maybe you're probably not having fallouts because it wasn't that serious. Or if we haven't talked in six years, it's a, well, I'm still calling you my boy. Uh, I want to share this with you because I think it's interesting. In this book called Girl Talk, the author, who is also a journalist, she highlights certain aspects of women's friendships. And she talks about a study that was once done where they asked people to list the name of a person you feel comfortable asking for money. Like you're in a bind. Who is a person you feel like you could ask them like, hey, can I hold a couple dollars because I'm struggling, right? Here's what's interesting. There were some men in that study who had written the names of people who had died years before. So just to give you an idea of how sometimes we can't consider duration of a friendship or how long we've known each other as a measure of success, there are people out here saying like, oh yeah, I've had this friendship 10 years, look at me. And they're trying to use it as an indicator of how they're getting it right. But we have to be careful about associating longevity with success. My hope is that kind of having you you think on that a little bit, you start to realize like, oh, okay, yeah, this doesn't mean that, that I'm a failure. I just can't get it right. So what do we do instead? Three things I want you to consider. The first, and I know it sounds corny. If you have been like, no, Danielle, you don't understand. I've had like three friendship breakups. I want you to do a couple things. The first is I want you to look at the data. Like, let's get technical with it for a second. Come out of your feelings for a moment and look at the data. What information, tangible information, do you have to work with from those breakups? Was there a theme in how they ended? For example, did you find that tension grew and grew and grew until somebody blew up? Because if that's the case, the lesson I should extract from that is, oh, I got to speak up sooner when I'm, I'm having an issue, okay? Are your friendships ending because you pop off, right? You have a temper or whatever it is. Oh, I need to manage my approach when I bring something to a friend, when I bring her a grievance. I need to soften my approach. Is it you being dishonest and telling a friend like, oh, no, we're good, we're good, we're good but it's not speaking truth to certain things you're not okay with, you know? So take a look at if you've noticed any like just data-based themes from these breakups and what lesson can you extract from that as you move forward. That'll help instead of getting down on yourself that they ended in the first place. Now, I wanna throw this out there as a note. If you are a person who is quickly, eagerly cutting people off, even boasting about it, which I sometimes hear us using as a flex, right? Like, oh, people already know you have one chance with me <laughs> and then you're done. It's not a flex, okay? What that reveals is a lack of conflict resolution skills and communication skills that you are leaving people as soon as they make a mistake or they make you angry. It's not a flex. If that is you, where you have a series or a collection of friendships that have ended because you don't know how to get over a hump or let people make mistakes 
or because you're scared of being left so you leave them first, any of that stuff, you're going to have to bring a little bit of a level of self-awareness to why your friendships might be ending. That's something different entirely. But for those of us who feel like, oh, no, I'm out here doing my best, but something didn't click and, and, and we couldn't revive it. I, I promise you, I assure you that if you take some time to apply some of these insights, I hope that it brings you more clarity. I hope it brings you a certain level of healing in the grief that you're feeling. And I hope it gives you optimism as you move forward and intentionally position yourself to invite healthy connections into your life. This is something that you have personally been struggling with and you want to work through it. I'd love to hear all the things and, and talk it through. You can learn more at betterfemalefriendships.com or hit me up on Instagram anytime at Danielle Bio Jackson. I'll see you over there.